and welcome once again to Showreel 87, the BBC TV and Radio Times Awards for amateur film and video makers. Today I'll be presenting to you some more of the entries which are competing for prize money worth a total of £9,000. Now there are two awards in each age group. A first prize of £2,000 and a second prize of £1,000. The age groups are 11 to 15 years, 16 to 24 and 25 plus. With me today is another of our panel of five judges, Chris Mengiz, and I'll be talking to him later in the programme. Now, we received in all nearly 600 entries for the competition, which took over six weeks of continuous viewing. And from these, we've picked around 40 of the best or more interesting entries to show you in these programmes. Entries came in on almost every conceivable subject and in a wide variety of styles and formats, both film and video. Although wildlife and natural history was a subject that very few tackled, perhaps because of the difficulty of getting close enough to the animals to film them well. But with our first entry today, the makers had the advantage of shooting their video in an area where the animals and birds haven't yet learnt to fear humans. Brian Paul from Somerset made his 40-minute video to publicise, as he put it, the other side of the coin of the Falkland Isles. Sea Lion Island was shot on VHS video. Gentoos are very inquisitive birds, on land walking upright with their small flippers extended for extra balance. Their webbed feet are bright orange and contrast greatly with the white fronts and shiny black backs. A white bar over its head is a distinguishing feature of the Gen 2. On our first visit in December, it was the height of the Gen 2 breeding season. Noise, activity and excitement were everywhere. While some Gen 2s were still incubating their eggs, others had already quite large soft grey fluffy chicks. The parents take it in turns to look after the chicks. First one will go to sea to feed, while the other one stands on guard. Penguins cannot fly as ordinary birds do, but when at sea, give the appearance of flying through the water, using their small flippers as propulsion and their webbed feet as a rudder. It appeared that this particular chick thought he was an ostrich. He had buried his head and thought we couldn't see him. This is the only Gen 2 rookery on Sea Lion Island. Unlike rockhopper and jackass penguins that leave the breeding grounds at the end of their season, Gen 2s are resident throughout the year. But look, a stranger in the camp. Our very first sight of the aristocracy of the penguin world, the beautiful King Penguin. To spot a single king in a colony of some eight to 10,000 Gen 2s is not an easy task like looking for a needle in a haystack. There are some two or three small colonies of king penguins breeding throughout the Falkland Islands. But here on Sea Lion Island, only two or three lone king penguins had been recorded. Now, however, the first pair are thought to be breeding. The king is approximately 39 inches tall, standing head and flippers above the smaller 30-inch Gentoo penguins. Handsome and regal, with bright yellow-orange patches each side of his head and a bright yellow-orange bib. This one appeared to have some damage or injury to the back of his head. Our next video was also inspired by the desire to impart the maker's knowledge and experience. Greta Jensen, an architect, and Tony Pitts, an engineer from London, both became interested in Tibetan Buddhism and teamed up to make Three Great Monasteries, which documents aspects of Tibetan religious life, albeit exiled in northern India. The 50-minute video was shot on VHS, and in this extract we see some of the preparations to celebrate their new year. 
These monks are preparing ritual objects for an important ceremony to be held in connection with the new year. The most important of these are the ritual cakes known as torma, made from a base of dough, shaped and embellished according to a combination of oral and written tradition. Some of the Tormas have painted flames and terrifying moulded clay heads. But each is precise in symbolic detail in relation to the type of ritual to be performed. The Torma are decorated with coloured butter and every intricate motif expresses some aspect of the Buddhist path to enlightenment. At the end of three days and nights, the ritual cakes are brought out of the prayer hall and taken in procession to a nearby open space. ends as the previous year's negativities, symbolized as having entered into the ritual cake, are consumed by fire. Great idea to burn up all your negative thoughts and actions so you can start the new year with a clean slate. Well, as I mentioned earlier, with me today is Chris Menges. Chris has had a distinguished career as cameraman on many highly acclaimed films such as The Killing Fields. And earlier this year, he was awarded the American Academy Oscar for Photography for his work on the mission. He's also an accomplished director with such notable films as East 103rd Street and is currently finishing his latest feature, A World Apart. Well, welcome to you, Chris. Nice Thank to you. have you along. Thanks. Now, as I've just said, you've done lots of documentaries. Mm. What words of advice would you give to somebody who's just starting out to make one? Mm. It's difficult, but don't, I enjoyed those films. I think it's important about how you look and how you see. Looking's important, but seeing's more important. What do you mean by that? Well, it goes on, I think, in, in a way, you have to choose subjects that are important to you or important to the people you work with. And if you choose the important subjects and you actually see, rather than just look, actually work at it, I think it, it's very rewarding, it's very exciting. Well, now I hear some news of last year's competition winners. There were only two age categories in 1986. In the oldest grouping, the second prize of £1,000 was won by the Abbey Film Unit in Nottingham. For their entry, there is a green hill. They've tucked their prize away into a building society and are saving to buy some good video equipment. The first prize winner was Joe Fordham for his entry, Board Game. He tells us that he's currently working on a Channel 4 commission for a new animation. In the younger stage group, the second prize was won by Alan Burgoyne for Trailers. He's bought himself a better video camera and is in the middle of making a full-length comedy review. And finally, the winner, both of the youngest age group and judged to have made the best film overall, was Daniel Cannon with Sometimes. Since then, he's made a full-length feature horror video behind the cataract and is now with the London International Film School as one of their younger students. 
that's all very good news and it also brings us round nicely to the next entry which comes from another young student at the London International Film School. Ashish Kotak is 21 and adapted a story by Sate about a young boy being brought up by a stern aunt in India. Shredni Vashtar was made in black and white on 35mm film. What we are about to receive, may the Lord make us truly thankful. Bless, O Lord, this food to our use and us to thy service. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Conradin, come here. Kneel and pray for forgiveness. You deliberately tried to annoy me. No tea for you. Pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. Shredni Vashtar by Ashish Kotak. Well, last year, science fiction seemed to be all the rage, whereas this year there was a significant drop in the numbers of such entries. But creating something futuristic was the challenge Casey Doby took on while studying theatre design at Wimbledon School of Art. Casey, who is 23, has been making films since he was 10 years old, and he shot Project 1796 on Super 8mm film. Apologies for the poor sound quality.
Don't be pathetic. blow up or doesn't he we'll never know project 1796 by Casey Doby well Chris that painted a very very bleak picture did you find it convincing I thought it was great I, I would have been proud to have lit some of that film I thought it was really good really you like fun. you like the lighting in particular yes, it's very, very fine mm. it's very difficult of course I, I suppose to create the right mood what, what sorts of lengths do professional cameramen go to to create the right atmosphere I think it's um it's really working with the art department and with the director and actually working with the storyboard, actually understanding clearly what you want to say and then imagining it in the wildest possible way and making pictures. I remember I was lucky to work for about three months on Empire Strikes Back as a second cameraman for Peter Shushitsky and um, we had the most beautiful storyboards, uh, some of them in colour and of course we had blue screens so we could do a lot of special process. But all that work is very important, that preliminary work. It's vital, yes, mm. absolutely. Knowing what you want to say and dreaming it up. Yes, right, thank you. Well, let's move on to another genre now. We received absolutely loads and loads of comedies. In fact, it feels like half the nation is trying to get the other half to laugh. But as Angela Pope, the judge in our last programme, explained, comedy is probably one of the most difficult areas to succeed in. It didn't put off Jackie Glass from Hebden Bridge, though. She felt that comedy was just right for her directorial debut. In The Bingo Beast, Ivan requires one number to win on his bingo card. It was shot on VHS, and I'm afraid the quality of the picture's a bit variable. But anyway, here's a short clip. You mean they've all sold out? I only came out yesterday. The proletariat woman sells like hot condoms these days, love. How about a copy of The Sun? There's just one left. The sun? I wouldn't buy that sexist rag to wipe my dog. The sun! I'll need the sun! Look into the sky, creep! I think it's the last copy, I'll take it. 18 pence, look. So, no, no, wait! I, I want that. I've got to have it. I just need one page. I'll buy it off you. Yeah. Take your hands off and I'll give it to you. Ah! By that, you pathetic pastry pervert, crawl back under your stone. The library! The library! The public piggy library! Have you seen this? Disgusting. Bloody disgusting, I call it. Oh my god, he's getting closer. The Roxy last night. Ooh, I feel sorry for the bingo caller. Clubbed over the edge with his own microphone. Oh, 
uh, but just look how long it's been going on. It's so mm. ruddy cold him, mm. aren't it? Mm. I used to really enjoy my bingo. Mm. I'm a bag of nerves now. There's no telling when he'll strike again. Oh, he ought to be strung up by his bingo balls. Oh. Ooh, the havoc that beast causes. Just when you think you've got a full oh, house, wow. all hell lets loose. Balls flying everywhere. everywhere. Obscene bingo calls. Ooh, it's disgraceful. disgraceful. Absolutely disgraceful. Oh, it's got to be here somewhere. You've got it. You are? I want it. I beg your pardon. Your newspaper. I only want the bingo Shh. page. Will you keep your voice down? This is a library, you know, and all of learning. Drink of some people. I'll give it you back. Who did it to me? Take it. Ta. The commonest look. I blame it on the parents, you know. I mean, just look at the state of it. What's up, Chuck? You look like you've just seen a ruddy ghost. It's him. Who's that, man? It's, it's him. He's here. It's an all. What the ruddy hell are we going to do? Oh, now we must stay calm at all costs. Uh, you, you phone for the police. Leave him to me. I'll make sure he doesn't get away. Bingo! <gasps> <laughs> the Bingo Beast by Jackie Glass. Our next entrant bought a video camera and then got fed up with it. Well, fed up with videoing his friends and relatives. So what could he do? Naturally, there was only one thing to do. Make a spoof based on the ITV series The Professionals. The Amateurs Part 2 was conceived and put together by 22-year-old Anthony Gunson and was shot on VHS. Three, Miss Graver. Yes. Mr. Bruce, there. Have you finished what I said you to do? Yes, Mr. Grey Rat. I got it right here. Good. Good. I want you to deliver it to a couple of old friends of mine. <laughs> sure. But it'll cost you extra. Oh, don't worry, Mr. Blixton. Your fee will be raised. <laughs> What's the address? I'll write it down for you, and then you won't forget it. <laughs> Here, take this. Why do you want it delivered? Right now. Leave it on the doorstep. Ring the bell. We'll would be sure not to be seen. I'm not get my money. As soon as they're dead, of course. I don't want those meddling fools interfering my plan like they did the last time. Okay, leave it to me. I intend to, Mr. Blixton. I intend to. And remember, no hiccups. Goodbye. Over and out. You will be over, and you will be definitely out.
How's that? So look at that. Yeah, that's better. It's dope. You're right. Too many time. Well, what are we gonna do? Well, it's too late to call the bomb squad. I'm gonna have to defuse it myself. Yeah, well, I, I'm just gonna stay up. here. Okay then, but uh, how are you gonna do it? Well, I used to make me on fireworks at school, so uh, <laughs> I might be able to do this. Yeah, I take a chance. <laughs> You could have got us both killed! You fool! I, I, I think it's this main fuse. Yeah. Ooh. 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 Oh good, that was the amateurs part two. Well Chris, I really liked that. I thought it was a lot of fun and I think there were some really good ideas in that. How about you? It made me laugh. I thought it was good. It made you Very laugh good. too. Yeah. Good. What, what came across I felt was that they, they looked like they were having a really, really good time. They were enjoying themselves mm. and I think that's quite important, don't you? I do. I think they clearly enjoyed making the film and it's, it's a great success. Do you still find that you're able to have a good time when you're working on films? Oh, I think um, there are a lot of people who work in television and cinema who actually give great pride in everything they contribute and I think there's good team spirit often it's, yeah. it's a nice feeling yes what about now you've seen virtually all the all the entrants in fact mm. and you must have had some general impressions have you any hints or tips to people um, either as a cameraman or as a director I think sounds really important I think sound can make give you another dimension to what you're saying uh, footsteps on gravel or, or just clear speaking, people speaking clearly is very important. Um, I think length's a bit of a problem. I think we're all too proud of what we do. And I think we should look at the narrative, look at what we're trying to say and cut it away and just give the bare bones because in those bare bones there's probably a greater story. Yes, that's actually quite interesting because you are a cameraman and a director and a lot of the entrants had to do both. Sometimes they had to wear three or four hats at, at once. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's better, if you are directing, to just direct, if possible, to step back and get an overview? I think working with a team's good. I think if the minimum should be, say, a director and camera person, uh, an editor, uh, and probably some kind of manager and a sound recordist, I think the sort of four people, you have to have those people so that you can think about what you're trying to say. Yes, yeah, so you can step back and not yes, be too involved. Exactly. Yes, to, to, to have yeah. good judgment. Okay, well, our next entry is a documentary about a blacksmith, but not just any old blacksmith. Charles Normandale is one of a new breed of designer blacksmiths, designing and making specially commissioned pieces of art, as well as those he exhibits in his own gallery. 19 year old Justin Sykes from the Winchester School of Art made this entry on VHS as part of a project for his A level design course. The sundial basically was commissioned alongside a gate. The steps involved in making the sundial uh, basically started with obviously being contacted by the client, going to the location and looking at the environment that it, it's got to be placed. A very interesting building. It had a lot of walled-in gardens. Very high, 20 feet walled-in gardens. Uh, so I went and looked at that first. Uh, the scale, the size of, of, of the sundial was paramount because it's wall mounted there's a building on either side of the wall at either end of it i should say so it had to harmonize with a very old 
brick wall, with buildings, with a gate. Uh, so it started to give out a format. I wanted to make an integral piece which would harmonize with the existing environment, but also create a visually interesting unit in itself. The actual sundial is 1.6 meters wide. It's a half semicircle, uh, and it reads from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., like most dials. That looks good. Then it came to actually working out the mathematics. Uh, first, I thought of going to the London Conservatory, but in fact used uh, a man who makes sundials, Peter Parkinson. Uh, and he actually worked out the mathematics on that one for me. It's complicated. The wall was one degree, 22 minutes from due south, and leant back one degree, for 43 minutes. So it's quite a complicated mathematical equation involved there. The numerals were left to last, so we went back to modern Roman numerals. Uh, just punched, very cleanly, very precise, just punched into the surface of, of the dial. Uh, and then came the installation. It goes well with the gate, I feel, uh, and creates quite a nice little vista in, in a rather nice environment. That was Charles Normandale, designer blacksmith by Justin Sykes. Our next filmmaker was driven to it by her husband. In a bid to stop her criticising him, he challenged her to do better, so she did. Mavis Spence from Leeds is a probation officer who specialises in doing profiles of the characters in her community. 83-year-old Mr Bloom came to her notice through his garden, created entirely out of junk. There wasn't much brightness in people's lives when I was a lad. So when I retired, I thought I'd brighten things up for folks. As I make my flowers and figures, my thoughts often go back to the, to the good old days. Well, I, I work from junk material, you know, what other people throw away, but it's, it's, be, it's always been with me because we were brought up in abject poverty, you know what I mean? We never had any money, we never spent any money, and it's still with me, and I never spend any now. I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't do anything like that. I never have done, and I'm getting benefit by it because I come off a very long-lived family. I had five brothers and four sisters, that's ten of us, and we lived in a two-up and two-down, long terrace houses in Featherston. There were no flush toilets, there were no gas, and there were no electricity. All we had then were coal fires and paraffin lamps, and, 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 and hygiene hadn't been invented. And uh, you not believe what it was like. Every, every house was full of bugs, fleas, flies, black dogs, crickets, silverfish, and no matter what it was, it, every house was full of them and, and they couldn't have known about it, you know. And these conditions, you know when you watch it telly and you see these pictures of Ethiopia with kids all covered with flies, well, they were like that here in June and July and August. And, and them days, there were no doctors, you could, there were nothing, there were no medicines, all the world were Epsom salts, licorice powder, uh, iodine, you rub on you, camphorated oil. Well, you should stick to why, haven't it, people, you know, with this camperated oil on the back and on the front. And, and coal miners, they wouldn't wash your backs, you know. I want to realise lately why. Because these people that get it bath every day and they shower every day, they're not half as healthy as the other ones. Uh, the body, in my opinion, builds up a protection. And if you're going to keep washing it off, you're up against it all the time. And as regards, and as regards poverty, I mean, I've knocked up people's door time and again. I've got a pair of old shoes, and you get half a loaf, 
Oh, but today, there you know that about everything put in the ground. But out there in that garden, I make all my own plant pots, I make all my own compost, and I don't buy a thing. It was spend a penny on that garden. If I can't make it out of all the people throw away, I don't want it. Sun, rain or snow, this garden is always in bloom. Oh, lovely. I remember characters like that from my childhood. Muck for luck. Mr Garden's Blooms by Mavis Spence. And that's about it for today. In the next programme, we'll be seeing some of the animations entered. For now, though, my thanks to Chris Mengis for joining me. And to end with, here's a taster for the next programme. An animation made on 60mm film by the pupils of Ainsley Park Secondary School in Edinburgh. A spaceship carries people and animals away from over-polluted Earth. See you tomorrow.